the conversations what everyone was uh, was asking yeah. and what, what's what's your view and what does and maybe this uh, very first question what do you think um is dating an honor where's the honor in 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 dating and what does it look like uh, there's often a uh, temptation for single people to feel a little bit um, discontent about the season we come from a culture a church culture that if you come from where i come from i go home still to date the pastor will make me stand up and say that she's still single right and there's always that discontentment that it comes with right to say oh, what's happening and, and like i said there's always honor in getting picked you get picked for gigs you get picked for work you get there's just that thing right that you've kind of made it so where do you think in light of everything that's just been spoken about um the honor <laughs> the honor in, in in this dating concept concept and the scene for it and the kingdom culture and the uh, modern contemporary Christianity if there's such a thing so the honor aspect is not very clear to me okay so I'll leave pastor <laughs> yeah because I'm not yeah. clear on the okay. question <laughs> all right um, yeah yeah you know the thing is sometimes I like from what you've described it's it's sad that you have to be put on the spot mm. like that all the time it's it's actually um, something that we shouldn't encourage you know yeah because everybody has a different journey yeah you know um, we're not all the same God's plan is not the same for everyone yeah you know so um, to to begin to box people or allow yourself to be boxed let me because you can't control what people do mm. but you can control how you respond or how you whether you take it in or not yeah yeah so it's important to to know yeah I think the greatest honor for you is to be in God's will yeah mm. and to walk according to God's timing for your life yeah not according to another person's timing or another person's perception or mm. belief whatever mm. yeah so you seek god for yourself and be content you know the bible says in whatever state you find yourself be content yeah so being content does not mean that you're not hungry for mm. for more or for oh, you know yes. for something else Amen. but while waiting yeah. you don't wait with the wrong attitude mm. so you wait you're waiting in faith and you are content there while still looking up to God mm. for what he has for you oh. amen That's amen good. Yeah. amen okay so let me come in um, with people who maybe have gotten married or got their partners early I got mine really early where they begin to feel honored, I'm, you know, feeling like they're better than anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, the people who are married today are not married because they are perfect. Mm. So if we feel like, oh, okay, I'm unmarried because there's something wrong with me, and the ones that are married are married because they are perfect, then we've missed it completely. Yeah. I will not be married. <laughs> you will not be married to mm -hmm. <laughs> the ones that are married yeah. if it is about perfection or how you are, how you carry yourself, because a lot of times we're taught a lot of things and it's important for us to know how to carry ourselves mm. and do certain things you know but sometimes people can actually look you know the ones who have gotten married can look at you and say is, is this thing mm. this is the reason why you are still here yeah <laughs> this is the reason why you are not yet married yeah. it is this behavior it is, you know so i'm saying uh, that sometimes those who are already married feel like the reason they're married is because you know I did the right things, I carried myself well, and you who is not married feel like I'm not yet married because I'm just getting something wrong. And there's pride that comes in there. At the same time, there's that thing of feeling low about yourself, mm. you know? So just be clear that no one is perfect. Yeah. 
there is someone for you Mm. even with your flaws yeah so those that you know you um you feeling ah putting yourself on a pedestal because you are married mm. um, i'm sorry you're not married because of perfection you're married god had mercy on you <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and he gave you the person for you That's he right. caused you to meet the right person yeah so if you are unmarried as well god will cause you to meet the right person and it will not be because you've been able to tick every box yeah you will never be able to tick every box yeah so it would not be because i got this right i got that right i got that. by now i should be married because i have it all together mm. you know so yeah yeah um, okay mm -hmm. and i i, I want to come into the point of checking boxes yeah um here i am at at my age there's somebody that i'm interested in check all the boxes mm. he's got a good face <laughs> you know he interests me he's tall he's dark and he's handsome um he's an option right there's an opportunity you know i always say to people when people ask me they're like well now i'm sure there's so many options and i say opportunities yes but it's not like they are an option mm. right mm. um That's so true. there's opportunities you're meeting people you are out there so what would you say to somebody who's single and they've met somebody check all the boxes really great but there's just this aspect of um they don't necessarily go to church like how we do church um but the humility is there uh, the kindness is there the loving is there but there's just this thing that they are not taking can we just say we'll go with this and see it uh, as we go and one day they would perhaps you know uh, get baptized in the spirit <laughs> and <laughs> with the evidence of speaking in tongues um is there something like that and what would you say to that uh, single person that has that kind of option okay <laughs> when you obviously get into a relationship or when you find someone or when you're looking you must be looking for someone who shares the same values as you your foundation your christian foundation and all of that why because in relationships you're going to face some challenging situations and when you face those challenging situations you must have a base for how you solve your problems mm. So if you go for someone who is nice, oh, he's, just because he's nice, he's good looking, he's all of that, you're missing one big thing. Is he God-fearing? Mm. So you've listed every other thing. You know, he's nice, he's got money, he's settled, he's, you know, he's ready, mm. he's, he's kind, he's thoughtful, but he doesn't know God. When you face certain situations, you need to be able to come to the word mm. together. Yeah. But if you cannot, because if he doesn't believe in, in the word, if he doesn't believe in what you believe in, your foundation is already faulty. Sure. So as much as possible, I would recommend that you don't only look at all of the, you know, he looks perfect and everything is looking good. Your number one, the number one thing for you should be, does he know God? Wow. And the truth of the matter is, the person who knows God may not even be perfect. You see, you've, you've said he's ticked all the boxes. Yeah. Have you ticked all his boxes? <laughs> yeah. 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 Because you could be ticking, oh, he's this, is that. And he's also, he has looked and says, mm, she's missing here. She's, mm. So it's that understanding that we are not perfect. Mm. But in looking, in searching, we want a godly person. We want someone. We don't want to be unequally yoked. And I know that we throw unequally yoked around. Yeah. But it's the word. Mm. So you cannot afford to be with someone who you cannot, you know, share. You cannot go to your father together with. Sure. Because you, we, we laugh about it. We say, you, you know, when you marry someone who is unsaved, your father-in-law is a devil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and, and yeah, it might sound extreme, but the truth of the matter is, he will also bring his ideologies and his way of thinking. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah? Yeah, so he will, he will bring all that when there's a problem. Or how, even you get married, how you're raising your children. Yeah. All of this, so many things. So you need to cut the first thing on your list should not only be 
that he's good looking and he's got everything and he's kind. There are many kind people who are yeah. not saved. Mm -hmm. There are many people who do good things. Char you haven't done half of what some people have done mm -hmm. in terms of being charitable and all of that. So that should not be the main thing you're looking out for. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that is um that is a very serious point, you mm. know, that um, having the basis, because there have been cases, you know, pastoring for so many years, we, we, um, we deal with different cases. Mm. And I cannot tell you how many times, you know, people have said to me, I wish I had listened. Sure. sure. You know, I wish I had not, um, I've not, I had not ignored the Holy Spirit's um, mm. leading because now we're trying to patch and trying to make uh, you know make it to work mm. and um, so there a lot there's a lot of pain a lot of um, a, a lot of scars and all of that so the foundation is critical mm. Yeah, because every marriage will go through crisis. There are seasons, there are challenges, there are different things, attacks, whatever, okay? Um, if, if, for instance, if, if let's say the child is sick and you, you need to deal with, and you say, okay, let's pray. And, mm. and, and you, you, you pray, you go to the hospital. But this person says, uh, yeah, but uh, we need to go to the Sangoma because I know these other... Yeah then immediately you have a problem there. Mm. and because you've not because the, the values the foundation is not the same mm. you're trying to build with someone who is already got another uh, option that yeah. is not compatible with yours mm. so there, there are different things like that that now, now come up mm. so when you when you start with the right foundation which is God and his word yeah. It is it is good because that's where you go to. When you go for counseling, it's the word we will use. Mm. You know, we will we will pray, <laughs> we will talk to Jesus and yeah. all of that. And uh, this person might say, No, I don't want to, I don't want like there's a particular case. The guy said, No, I, I don't want I don't want any church people talking to my life. Sure. So what do you do? You're stuck. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just want professional. And of course, they're going professional, but then the professional is not really um, dealing with the spiritual. It's clinical. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's why it's important. Yeah. Not to overlook those kind of things. All right. And um, when I was also setting up the, the scene and we spoke about... You know, when you're dating, you're literally exploring someone's soul or wanting to transition into that place of, of, of marriage. Do you think that uh, it's right to say, I found my soulmate? Is there ever a thing called a soulmate, the rib of my rib? And how do I identify the rib of my rib at Woolworths? Okay. Um, or when I'm meeting somebody, how do I identify that this is truly, you know, bone of my hey? <laughs> Yeah. Um, how do I identify that this is my soulmate? And is there something called that? You, you know, um, I can talk from my experience, you know. Um, and my experience is obviously not the standard, you know, but um, that's, that's, um, that's my journey, okay. So for me, like, I was kind of like, maybe similar to Ayanda, I just felt that, you know, I'm just going to change the world, I'm, I'm called to be celibate and, mm. you know, and I was like, I'd embraced it and I was excited about it, mm. you know going on my life and I intentionally um, made things difficult for the opposite sex around me. Mm. So if there's anybody, I would intentionally go out of my way to irritate. Wow. And to... <laughs> She's a queen. <laughs> yeah, I did. You know, I, I did. I wasn't kind to, to them because, you know, mm. and I just put it 
as a means of protection because I felt, okay, yeah, I'm called to be like Paul, so I'm going to, you know, um, I'm going to just serve God. But you see, I met this, I went to visit a family friend, um, Dr. Churchill, who is like, he was a, a man of God, and he, he's, he's, I went to visit him, and after that, as I was about to leave, he said, son, the Lord said, I should tell you to pray about marriage. Hmm. And, um, and then he said, look, because if you don't sort this out now, you're going to have problems in future. Yeah. And I was very angry because why is this man telling me this thing? Because who, did I say I want to get married? Sure. And so I was driving, I was driving my car from his house going and I was just angry. I was just talking to God. I said, this mm. man, you know, he doesn't understand me. He doesn't know my plans. Why is he talking? But then the Holy Spirit spoke to me by the time I got home, I was still fuming, you know, and the Holy Spirit said, but he said, pray. Mm. What's wrong with praying? Mm. So then I said, oh Lord, I'm sorry. Okay. Then I prayed. The yeah. moment I prayed, something happened inside me. Mm. Then I felt the need for companionship. Sure. Now, it was difficult because I don't know, I've, I've spoiled things around. <laughs> <laughs> So I've spoiled things around. Now the you know now I'm feeling the need. Yeah. So I began to pray about it mm. again and I'm like, what do I do? But to cut the long story short, you know, there was a lady I was going to approach um, based on recommendation from a friend. Mm. Oh, this person loves God, you know, this person will be a good minister's wife and all of that. And then I fasted and prayed for three days and I mm. said, Lord, okay, speak to me. If you don't speak to me, I'm going to approach this lady. So, mm. you know, uh, I went on a three days dry fast, you know. A dry fast is a fast where you don't drink water, you don't eat food. So I fasted for three days. And the day I was breaking the fast, as I was praying to break the fast, I went into a trance. Mm. And then I saw, I went to the meeting where I was supposed to meet this lady uh, to initiate, <laughs> you know, to, to begin things, right? And I, I, in, that, in that vision, I saw, I went there and I said, I was looking for her, I couldn't find her. Then I said, where is she? And I was calling her name. And, and then a hand, you know, said, take this one. I said, no, that's not the one I came <laughs> yeah. for. No, I said, no, this one, take this one. Sure. You know, so then it is two weeks after that I met my wife, mm. you know. And then, but then I had also prayed certain things. I said, okay, Father, if I, I, I want a woman who is a homemaker, mm. you know, um, because I also came from a, 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 a broken home. I want, I, I want a homemaker, someone who can really make my home, my house a home. And then I said, I also want somebody, <laughs> yeah, this is funny. I said, someone who is a fire eater. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> you know and, and I said I want someone who is who is spiritual who can you know uh, do this and that and but then when I met her and uh, yeah I wasn't a so fire you knew each, each other <laughs> so you knew each other at that point n n no my prayer like yeah. I said I've, I met her two weeks after my fast yeah okay so then meeting her we started she, she came to to deliver a letter to my flatmate mm. and that's where we met for the first time and and so you know but i still had the tendency of irritating and you know mm. so i would from time to time do some things that would like irritate her and all mm. of that and i was doing it on purpose but then, but then as time went on, the Lord began to speak to me, you know, and said, don't be afraid. Because I, I, I said to the Lord, no, but she's not spiritual. Sure. You know, and yeah, how, how mm. you know? So, so I was, <laughs> yeah. 
because I'm called to ministry and you know I want someone who can help me mm. you know and she didn't look like someone who could help me she didn't like to pray she didn't like <laughs> she didn't yeah. like the word she only loved to sing <laughs> yeah yeah it's not sounding good <laughs> I want to touch into your <laughs> after pastor just <laughs> yeah. yeah so but then one of the things that struck me mm. was I noticed that whenever she she gets her salary she would buy something to to make her flat mm. she would buy you know she would, she would decorate her flat she would you know I started noticing Mm. like you know she was homely yeah so that got my attention but she didn't know that those were things that it was part of what I was looking out for mm. so immediately that got my attention I now began to pray more and then that's when the Lord began to show me you know things you know and what to do and all of that so the Lord now said to me that what you do what i use you to do in her life is what i'm going to use you to do in the lives of other people wow. and then i knew that okay i need to disciple her hmm. you know and then i began to work on that and obviously it's not the template but it's like i say it's my experience hmm. you know how god led me then i would go visit her we would go through the word we would pray together you know and with time she started getting um, the fire the fire <laughs> yeah. Into, yeah. She, she became, yeah she became so spiritual and she would hear God wow and she would tell me God is saying this and I could see that she was really like hearing God she would you know experience God mm. and so it was um, yeah it really that was how I knew for me you know yeah yeah and how's your journey at that time are you in pursuit or and whenever he he would come around was it organic did you also have to hear god for your own uh, you know on your own there's a lot of uh, you know sometimes we'll we'll say you know a guy would approach and he's like the lord told me mm. Right? You guys it. have ha had it, right? The God said syndrome, right? God yes. told me that you're my wife. And I'm thinking, but uh, he hasn't spoken to me like, you know, why would he choose to speak to you <laughs> and not me? So for, and on your journey at that point in time, mm. um, how's your journey like? Are you looking for a man of God? Are you looking to get married at that point? Um, I wasn't looking for any man. Hmm. Not a man of God or a man of anything. <laughs> because yeah. I, I think I was quite young. Hmm. Right? So I think I met him maybe, I, I don't know, in my opinion, that was young. Now you might say, I met him, I was 21, when I, just before I turned 21. Hmm. So I wasn't really looking. But when I saw him, when I, uh, <laughs> when I went to deliver that message, like he said, when I saw him, there was just something, you know, mm. I liked him for him, mm. all right? Not, he, he wasn't putting himself out there, but it was just liking this person. Yeah. So now coming to saying, was he my soulmate and all of that? Mm. People have different experiences. Yeah. Some could say, you know what? There are many women here, anyone will do. <laughs> yeah. As long as they fit into certain, you know, if you say, is she spiritual? Is she a homemaker? Because the things he said, they are quite broad. Yeah. Any one of you can fit in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can be spiritual, you can be a homemaker, you can be on fire, all of those things. Mm. But there is still that thing where you've made your decision. Mm. I remember when he said to me, and I, I didn't like it at that time, I actually thought it was an insult, mm. you know, to say to me, uh, he says, I, I have decided. Yeah. You know, when he said to me, he had decided, I felt, what is this? decision because I wanted someone who was saying I'm hopelessly mm. sorry I'm just uh, yeah <laughs> someone who is just saying yeah. I'm hopelessly this is the one that I'm drunk in love and yeah. all of that yeah but for him it was yes the Lord had spoken to him and brought me and all of that but it was also a decision to say okay this is the person because you see like I'm saying Malibu 
can fit that picture perfectly. Mm. Jessica can fit that picture perfectly. Sure. But it is when you've seen this person, you know, okay, I feel this is the one, I know this is the one I can live with. And you make a decision to be with that person. Mm. Then you stay with that person. Yeah. So it's important. So saying, oh, is the flesh of my flesh. It, then he became the flesh of my flesh, yeah. or I became the flesh of his flesh, yeah. and the bone of his bone, based on the decision that we had made. All right. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, it is possible for many people to fit into those criteria. Yeah. Many people can fit in there, but ultimately, it is at the end of the day knowing I can live with this person, or I don't want to live without this person, mm. and I know this person is of God, and I know this person we can go all the way together, and then you decide this is who I'm going to marry. So yeah. it might not sound that spiritual, mm. but that's just how it was for me.